Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this pattern in Adobe Photoshop. If you would like the design files for this tutorial, uh, be sure to uh, check out my Patreon page where I upload all of the uh, design files for um, all of my tutorials here on YouTube. If you'd like to uh, support this channel, go ahead and check that out and I will leave a link to uh, my Patreon page in the description below. To start off with, let's go ahead and create a new file. For this, I'm going to use the dimensions of 1200 pixels by 1200 pixels. Make sure artboard is not selected. We will be using the pattern preview tool, which you cannot use with artboards. Resolution is 300 pixels per inch, color mode, RGB color, and then just background content set to transparent. I'm going to go ahead and click on create. To start off with, I'm going to add a grid layout. So I'm going to go to view, new guide layout, and then I'm just going to do two columns and two rows here, and then just clicking on OK. And then I'm going to use the pen tool, which is P on the keyboard. You can also access it here for the pen tool. Starting here in the center, I'm just going to select a point, dragging up, selecting a point here at the top, and then just dragging it out. And then we'll do one here, a little bit above the middle, dragging it out. And then I'm going to go ahead and complete that shape. Next, I'm going to access the direct selection tool, which is A. You'll find that here. Right click. We have our direct selection tool or your past selection tool. We're going to select the direct selection tool. I'm going to select this point here. We see our little handles here and then and I'm going to hit option click for Mac users. That would be alt click for PC. And that causes these handles to break so you can move them independently of each other. Hitting the key option click. Some cases it doesn't work, so we'll just undo that command Z. I find that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, so we'll just kind of fiddle with it here until I can get it to work. There we go, it's already broken. And then just bringing it up here to create more of that like swoop look here. And then let's click down on this point. We'll do the same thing, option click for Mac users. Let's kind of bring it so we get a little bit more of a of an angle here. I'll go ahead and hit V for the move tool and then just click off of it. And we have a basic kind of swoop here. I'm going to go ahead and fix this angle here. So let's, I'm going to go to the move tool. I'm going to select my shape again and then A to get our direct selection tool. And then I'm just going to fix this one here, maybe bring out this a little bit to get a little bit more of a rounded shape here. And then we'll go V for the move tool, clicking off of it. And we kind of get that rounded swoop here. Clicking on my object, I'm just going to zoom out here a little bit. And then let's go ahead and get rid of those guidelines. So view, clear canvas guides. I'm going to go ahead and just bring it down a little bit so it fits within our canvas here. I changed my mind. I'm going to bring those guides back on. We'll have our two columns, two rows, because I like to see my center point. What we're going to do next is we are going to rotate this object. So I've got my object. I'm going to align it here to the center. And then to rotate an object, uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to duplicate it. So Command or Control J. And then I'm going to use the free transform tool. So Command or Control T, which brings up these options here. And then when you hover over it, you see this um, point here in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and start moving it because I want it to be here in the center. And then after I move it, I can just enter the details here. We're just going to go 600 pixels, 600 pixels vertically. So we hit our center point. And then I'm going to go to the rotation tool here. And so I want this object, I'm going to repeat it 10 times around the circle. And so if we have 360 degrees divided by 10 is 36 degrees here. So I'm going to enter 36 degrees and then just select OK. And then we need to complete that step again, Command or Control J to duplicate it, Command or Control T. Doing the same thing, we'd move this. Let's enter our 600 for X and then 600 for Y. And then we'll move this 36 degrees and selecting OK. And then you would just continue to do it around the circle. I do have an action pack that I've put together that I sell in my Etsy shop that you can use to easily rotate objects around a circle. 
So I'm going to go ahead and delete these layers here, and then I'm just going to show you how this action works. So I've got my action pat repeat object around a circle, and then I've got uh, several different ones. And so I have one rotate repeat 10 here, and then I'm just going to go ahead and hit play, and it will automatically rotate it around the circle. This is a nice action. It definitely helps speed up the process for this particular step. I'm going to select all these layers here. I'm going to right click and just convert this to a smaller object and then we'll just size it down here. And I'm going to size it to about a quarter here. There we go. And then I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this smart object. I'm just going to turn off this uh, original shape layer uh, with this group here. I'm just going to go ahead and select all these shapes. I'm going to go to Layer, Combine Shapes, and then we're just going to Unite our shapes. That way it behaves as one shape here. And then I'm going to go ahead and give this a color. So I'm going to choose this pink color here. And then we'll go ahead and save this, Command or Control S, and then close out Command or Control W. So I'm going to create a block pattern using four different colors. And so I'm going to right click and then we're going to do new smart object by a copy. That will create a duplicate smart object. But when you go to uh, change the colors, it won't affect the original. So command or control S, command or control W to close out. And we have two objects here. So we'll do the same thing, right click new smart object by a copy and then we'll select our next color and then saving this command or control s closing out command or control w and then we will do that one more time right click new smart object by a copy double clicking in we'll select our next color saving this command or control s closing out command or control w and we have our four different colors here Next, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those guidelines so we will clear our canvas guides. And then I'm going to zoom out Command or Control minus key here. And then we are going to turn on the Pattern Preview tool. So we have View, Pattern Preview. And then you can see the basic repeat. And I'm just going to bring this to the corner here. And then just start moving these objects help using the help of the guides to get them aligned to where I want them to be. And then let's go ahead and add a background color. So we'll click here to add a solid color adjustment layer. And then I'm going to select from my swatch panel here. And then we'll just bring this to the back. And we have our pattern here. With the pattern preview tool open, you'll want to go to edit, define pattern. You can give your pattern a name, click on OK, and then you'll see it here in the swatch panel in the patterns window. If you do not have your patterns window open, you can go to window and select patterns here. Let's go ahead and test this pattern in a new document. So we're going to go to file new. This time I'm going to use the dimensions of digital scrapbook paper, which is 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. Resolution 300 pixels per inch, color mode is RGB color, background content set to transparent. This time I am going to have artboard selected and then just go ahead and click on create. We'll go ahead and add a pattern adjustment layer here, just clicking on OK. And then we'll just select it from our patterns window. And we have our repeating pattern here. So whenever I create patterns, I like to be able to adjust the color at this step of the process. So when I jump back over into my swatch, I like to save it, my patterns so I can also adjust the colors later on. So let's go ahead and exit our pattern preview mode. So we'll go view pattern preview. When you exit the pattern preview, you no longer see the repeating elements here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this color fill layer here. And so now we just have our transparent background again. I'm going to use an action that I created for this four object pattern. Uh, this action will be available in my Patreon page. I will leave a link to that in the description below. Uh, when you sign up for my Patreon page, you get access to all of the design files from my tutorials here on YouTube. And then I also have special little bonuses uh, like this action set that I'm going to include with the design files for this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select all four of these objects here. 
Uh, coming to my actions here, I have a four object pattern set, and then I have one called uh, for a block pattern with four objects, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and push play. As you can see, the action went ahead and worked, and so here in the layers panel, I have a group with all of my duplicates here, and then I've got the originals here. So I could easily uh, delete this group and then just get back to my originals here if I needed to. What we see in our patterns panel with this action is it automatically saved a pattern swatch of each of the different elements and also all of the elements together. So let's go ahead and look at those in our other document. So uh, with this artboard, Let's go ahead and add a solid color for our background. We'll select, let's just go ahead and white from the moment FFF here, and then we'll bring that to the background. And then I'm gonna add a, another solid color adjustment layer. Go ahead and click on OK, and then we're gonna do a clipping mask here. So we are going to right click and just create clipping mask here. And then I'm just gonna bring this one into the artboard here. And then with these two layers, I'm gonna duplicate them, Command or Control J, and we're gonna do that until we have four different layers here. So let's go ahead and select this first pattern fill layer. We'll select our color. We'll select another color here. And then our next pattern layer. And then our final pattern layer here. And so if we wanted to select a different color palette, we can easily uh, change out the colors here. Maybe we change this one and make this one green so it uh, repeats differently there. So I love using actions when I can to uh, speed up a process that I might do over and over again. So I commonly create patterns using four different colors. And so I, I created this action as a way to make an easy uh, block style pattern with four different colors. And I've made it so I can easily uh, change the colors here. So if you want to get your hands on this action set, uh, go ahead and join me over on Patreon. If you want to save your digital paper here, you'll go to File, Export, Export As. And then uh, here under Format, uh, typically we do a JPEG. And then you can change the uh, quality here to bring it up. Uh, just note that the higher the quality, the larger the file size here. And then just under Color Space, I like to click to Embed Color Profile. And then you can just click to export your document. Thank you for watching this video on how to create this pattern in Photoshop. In this video, I used uh, one of my action packs on how to easily repeat an object around the circle. I will leave a link to that in the description below. I also used my action to easily create four color patterns, and I will include that as a bonus to my patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to join me over on Patreon, I will leave a link in the description below. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. Be sure to check out my other tutorials on how to create patterns in Photoshop. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.